The Mandalorian, an exhilarating space western series that transports viewers to a galaxy far, far away where the rules are just as elusive as the characters' allegiances. Initially set in the aftermath of the fall of the Galactic Empire and before the emergence of the First Order, the show follows the enigmatic bounty hunter known only as the Mandalorian, or Mando as we will refer to him from this point forward, on his perilous journeys across the outer reaches of the galaxy. With each episode, audiences are drawn deeper and deeper into a rich tapestry of adventure, intrigue, and horror as Mando navigates a volatile landscape where trust is a scarce commodity and the very act of survival often comes at a steep price. Now I can hear you saying, Kaz, what does the Mando have to do with Blender? Well, I'll just skip the next paragraph of the script and cut to the chase like OJ on the 4-5 freeway. At the heart of The Mandalorian lies a captivating exploration of the concept of horror and the moral complexities inherent in a world governed by shifting allegiances and personal codes of conduct. Mando, a stoic and resourceful warrior, grapples with questions of duty, loyalty, and the greater good as he traverses the cosmos in pursuit of his elusive quarry. Throughout his encounters with a diverse array of characters, each with their own motivations and agendas, the show delves into themes of redemption, sacrifice, and the enduring power of resilience in the face of adversity. Given its visually stunning cinematography, immersive world building, and dynamic action sequences, The Mandalorian possesses all the key ingredients for a captivating video game adaptation. From the bustling streets of Mos Eisley to the desolate sands of Tatooine, the show's meticulously crafted environments beg to be explored in an interactive format. With its rich lore, compelling characters, and boundless potential for epic quests and thrilling encounters, The Mandalorian stands as a prime candidate for a video game adaptation that would undoubtedly captivate fans and newcomers alike. With all that being said, this would explain exactly why a fellow cool human being created a Mandalorian video game, and I say video game in quotation marks, because in 2023, screenshots of the game, again in big quotation marks, shocked the internet and made a lot of people realize how much they actually wanted a Mando game. And now, with the death of the possibility of an actual game by the hands of EA, this video is actually a lot funnier in light of recent events. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course, an extended mini-series that serves to document the various shenanigans that I have encountered throughout my time relearning Blender, and also for the sake of this video today, making video games. If you like the discussion or the quote unquote video game menu that we made today, feel free to hit that like button right next to the subscribe button and feel free to hit the subscribe button since you're already down there. Tell me some of your thoughts on the Mandalorian or even just a Mandalorian video game that you might want to see in the comments below as well. Or name something that you want to see me make in Blender next. With all of that out of the way, let's make some Mandalorian video game screenshots. And I think Mandalorian game screenshots is a little bit of a funny thing to say because by the end of this entire thing i didn't actually make screenshots i made an entire animation which you've probably already seen if you've been paying attention to the channel in the last couple of days this entire animation was kind of too ambitious for my own good by the end of it it was kind of worth it overall i, I was very happy with how everything came out setting up the scene and the workstation that i needed to use in blender i think that was probably the thing that i needed to get the most comfortable with because just getting through the blender ui and understanding where everything goes as well as where everything isn't and also where everything is is probably one of the most important things when it came to learning blender that's why i kind of spent roughly three or four months trying to figure out where everything is in blender before i even started making this little video series that little amount of time figuring out the interface really helped me with this keyframe animation though or at least the set of keyframes that i was trying to get done because i needed to make a walk cycle for this entire animation why did i need to make a walk cycle even though you didn't actually see the fact that i made a walk cycle that was because animation is just like that sometimes you don't see any of the actual animation or things that were done in order to make the frames that you end up seeing actually happen which is one of the funniest things that i actually learned really quickly another thing i learned quickly was that the legs are connected to the hips remember that your legs are connected to your hips that's something that i forgot very quickly and then i ended up having to fix that in post not really in post this was pre-production technically pre-production shenanigans aside this was actually a lot more fun but again as difficult as it could have been for me not knowing how everything works i did come to realize that i was using this wrong type of rigging well not rigging what is it called i was using i was using inverse kinesthetics instead of fk which i forgot what f in kinesthetics stands for anyway 
I should have been using FK instead of IK in order to make some of these uh, smoother arcs happen, especially when it comes to using the arms to actually swing up and down the dark saber. But I came to realize, and eh, that didn't really matter. This all worked together anyway, but I just had to make sure that all of the end frames in the animation were as close as they possibly could, especially when it came to these fingers. The fingers kind of were super irritating, but they worked the same way that everything else did. But I think one of the biggest lessons here that I've learned so far, and you'll be getting it in a couple of seconds in the video, but I think one of the biggest lessons here that I've learned so far was uh, be careful with how you use volumetric assets. What does that mean? That means be careful of how you use any type of object in Blender or in any 3D environment that is a gas or a liquid. Because my goodness, do I tell you, this animation would have taken about 550 hours or so if I had finally decided to go on and just use the gas cloud that I'm just going to show you in a second. But what didn't take 550 hours was actually making this lightsaber, uh, lightsaber. It, it technically is a lightsaber, but I want to say dark saber. What actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to was actually making the dark saber ignite. I had to shrink down the dark, the actual blade of the dark saber, and then just uh, keyframe it out to actually bounce or at least spring out, which is a much better way to say it. That was cool, which I, I was very, I was very happy with myself to see how that actually uh, came together because. Uh, there, there's no real actual blender tutorial to show you how to actually make a, a lightsaber or any type of energy blade spring out of its own hilt. But you know, that short joy and victory was, again, very short after I got to working with, again, the volumetric cloud slash the fog that I was working with. I ended up getting a fog add-on just to actually make fog as fast as possible because I was trying to make it myself. but. Uh, like I said, volumetrics are very hard to work with in Blender sometimes, especially when you don't want your computer to blow up. But this add-on was free, or at least the free version that I used, again, was free. It was the demo version, but it served my needs for exactly what I wanted to do. So going forward, I actually do want to keep it, and I am probably going to use it for a couple of other things in the future. But it's just, uh, again, 500 hours versus the almost 12 hours it kind of took for this to happen. I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. I will wait no longer because, again, I already have about, let's see, I think about 705 hours worth of stuff that I've done in Blender just by way of leaving stuff to render out overnight. Not, not the funnest thing to do, but, you know, fun, kind of. At this point, you can honestly see where I'm about to just get ready to delete this entire cloud. But because I made it, I was like, no, nah, let's not. I do need to keep it for something. It's just that the something that I needed to keep it for was not this animation. And so, with all that being said, I present to you the Mandalorian video game that never was. Let's just finish this so we can be on our way. Sixteen hours later and I still kind of want to do another follow up to this animation just to see how the game would actually open if I were to continue making it. If you want to see all that, you're going to have to subscribe, leave a like on this video and also comment down below. Tell me what you thought of the whole process, because this was a fun process, but it was frustrating in a lot of points. I kind of touched on a lot of them, but after about 16 hours of assembling this entire thing, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 or at least maybe a 7.8. And with all that being said, be sure to check out the Blender Discourse course playlist for more shenanigans and discourse. And until the next video, I will check you all later.